live in beautiful downtown Boston. This is the Jeff Santos Show. Our regular Mark Taylor Canfield will uh, call in from Seattle and get the latest from the great uh, city of Seattle. Then Adam Green of uh, Progressive Change uh, Campaign Committee will uh, join us at 434 here in studio. 449, Robert Craig, our regular from Citizen Action, Wisconsin. 506, we'll talk to Jimmy Tingle, the great comedian uh, from Boston, will be with us. And uh, then 523, uh, Mike O'Day. We'll wrap it up with uh, Ono Moss at 549. It is a packed schedule. I'm going to try to sneak in a couple other people, too. we got got uh, lots going on, but I wanted to talk a little bit about yesterday. We had an interview with Chris Matthews, and um, I just want to say this, folks. There are a lot of people in Washington, D.C. who simply don't get it yet. And unfortunately, I think Chris, who's spent a lot of time in politics, is an expert in politics, um, you know, some of the talk, the comments he made yesterday are just kind of things that are out of Republican talking points. You know, uh, people are waiting in line in Canada, no proof of that. Uh, the, the fact that uh, he is uh, not like FDR because he wants welfare for everybody. Um, and, of course, FDR's Social Security program has nothing to do with welfare. It's for everyone, and it's a retirement program. So there's just a lot of things that are going on, and I think it, it is not because... Uh, Chris doesn't care about people who are working class. I just don't think that he understands what Bernie Sanders and what people in this country are doing, particularly those under the age of 50. So I wanted to make that clear. Um, we'll replay the interview we did yesterday. It was quite uh, contentious, to say the least. But um, that's just the way things are, folks, sometimes when you get into heated debates. And uh, we welcome uh, those debates uh, all the time. That being said, uh, we op- we welcome anybody from uh, MSNBC or CNN or whatever to come on the show and debate these issues. Uh, these are, in my opinion, um, you know, very clear that uh, the rest of the Western world has done single payer health care, four years of free university, which we did in California in the 1960s under then Governor Pat Brown. Uh, these are not radical policies. It's time now to go out to Seattle, Washington, and uh, get an update uh, from our good friend uh, Mark Taylor Canfield, uh, from uh, the great journalist, independent journalist uh, from uh, Puget Sound, and get uh, the latest. Uh, Mark, happy Election Day from New Hampshire here. How are you, my friend? Good, Jeff. Uh, Seattle is celebrating the Lunar New Year, so 15 days of celebrations across Asia, and yes, we had our fireworks and our dragons to, you know, yesterday for the New Year, so happy Lunar New Year to everyone. Well, you know, I think, uh, Mark, that, um, you know, what Seattle has done with the $15 minimum wage, what Seattle has done with... uh, opening the door, uh, I think, to people realizing who Bernie Sanders is with 25,000 people there. Uh, this, to me, is an example of, uh, you know, where the cutting edge of the country is. And um, talk to me about, I think, a lot of people here in New Hampshire and the, on the national media tonight will be, will be talking about Bernie Sanders and talking about, um, you know, who he is and uh, where his policies are in the American people. It, it seems to me his policies whether you're looking at the Congressman Jim McDermott's uh, perspectives uh, on single-payer health care or or what some of your folks in the city council have done with the minimum wage, to me shows that uh, the people of Seattle have already figured out that Bernie Sanders is good for them and good for the country. Your thoughts? Yes, I was just writing an editorial today for the Capitol Hill Times about our retiring progressive city council member Nick Licata, he came out very early um, endorsing Bernie Sanders, and so did uh, Council Member Shama Sawant. Uh, so Seattle is all for Bernie. Um, there are, of course, a lot of Hillary Clinton supporters here, and a lot of the leadership in the uh, Democratic Party has traditionally supported Hillary Clinton. But Bernie is on fire in the Northwest. You can definitely feel the burn here. And Seattle is actually going to have another music industry fundraising event for the Bernie Sanders campaign. Uh, They call it uh, Bernie Man. Instead of Burning Man, it's Bernie Man. And so last time, uh, several clubs got together, and musicians, local bands, DJs, and uh, and club owners got together and decided to do a fundraiser. So it was a great night of uh, local music. Uh, You could pop around between clubs. It was like a little festival, and it's happening again uh, this month. So another Bernie Man for for, uh, Bernie in Seattle. 
and uh, the music industry seems to be behind him up here. Uh, most of our local politicians have jumped behind Bernie Sanders, so uh, I think he's doing great. He's doing great with a lot of the students in the Northwest as well, and uh, you know, but all across the country. I mean, I was checking out uh, some of the Twitter accounts devoted to Bernie Sanders right now, and I mean, there's so many I can't keep track of them all, and a lot of them. Uh, uh, sites like People for Bernie and the Bernie Artists have, you know, tens of thousands of followers at this point. So he's very popular in the social media as well. And Seattle, of course, has always sort of been on the cutting edge in the new technology game. So people here are tweeting about him 24-7 right now. It's, it's incredible, Jeff. He's really on a, a upswing in the Seattle area. His, his politics are definitely more traditional, progressive, Northwest-style politics. Most of the people here are against the... Uh, so-called free trade agreements. Um, there's a lot of union organizing in this area. Occasionally, you know, the longshoremen, you know, decide to shut down the ports to protest some of the policies of the government. So unions uh, who are the top five major backers, of course, for Bernie Sanders are labor organizations. And so the labor unions in the Northwest are way behind him as well. So he kind of fits with the traditional progressive Northwest attitude. You know, Vermont and, uh, and Seattle have a lot in common, actually, in terms of the culture and the politics. Talking with Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santo Show. Uh, again, um, <clears throat> Mark is a regular with us, usually on Tuesdays at uh, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Uh, and, of course, a great journalist uh, today with Radio Row. We wanted to make sure we get a, a quick uh, update from him. Um, final, final question for you, uh, Mark. Are, are, you, um, are you thinking that this is Bernie territory when the primaries come? Will he be favored in Washington State and Oregon when uh, those uh, uh, come later this spring, those primaries? I would put it this way, Jeff. I think he's going to be hard to beat. Uh, Hillary Clinton has her hands full uh, in the Northwest. There is a large portion of the state, of course, that votes Republican. That's on the eastern side of the state. But, you know, they wouldn't be involved in the caucus for Bernie Sanders. So I think he's going to have an incredible uh, grassroots campaign here. Thanks, Jeff. Have fun in New Hampshire. Well, I uh, definitely do. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. All the best. He understands progressives. He was part of a group, uh, along with our friends at MoveOn.org, that wanted to bring Elizabeth Warren to the forefront. He was part of a group, uh, of course, that had his brother run for president in 2004. He is the chair of Democracy for America. We have him on Fridays, but today is Election Day. He is here in studio with us, our friend, the chair of DFA, Jim Dean. Happy Election Day, Jeff. Happy Election Day, Jim. So great to see you in person. Good to see you again, as always. It is fantastic to have you here. As I was saying just a couple of minutes ago, uh, I think people are beginning to feel the burn, uh, understand the burn, um, and, and hopefully get the burn. Uh, I still think there's some people, particularly in the nation's capital, that quite quite figure it out. But um, there eventually will come along. Well, I think the big thing is uh, the, uh, the people, no matter which candidate they're supporting, are, are all over this country. And I mean, Republicans and independents, but also particularly in centers of power like Washington, are getting that these issues are really real. Yeah. Uh, and there's a reason that they're polling as high as they are. The, the reason uh, that Americans are glued onto this economic inequality issue, people feel it. And, uh, and we keep talking about this, but uh, it kind of falls on deaf ears, uh, particularly in Washington, you know, when they start talking about things like entitlement reform, stuff like that. I mean, these aren't even entitlements, for God's sakes. We've been paying into them. Uh, you know, that is the out of the mainstream thinking. The mainstream thinking is really uh, the issues that Bernie is talking about it and the way that he is talking about it. That's equally as important. Uh, you know, the label stuff. Is had their election, Mr. Trudeau winning. You know, it's like three or four months done. Yeah, right. Here we a year and a half. Oh uh, yeah, it's very different here. Other folks are going to pay attention to it, and certainly uh, Hillary Clinton is paying attention to it now and trying to find her own voice in those issues. Well, interestingly enough, we have uh, heard some uh, comments from her, some television ads from her, that that basically are talking about the fact that there is. Uh, a need to, to, to fight uh, on, on uh, campaign finance uh, issue, to fight on uh, Wall Street, to fight on a lot of issues that Bernie Sanders uh, has been a champion on for a long time. So in, in that way, uh, he has already had a tremendous effect. 
uh, Jim Dean, and I feel that you know there is a opportunity, um, you know, for these issues that you have championed, that we've talked about on the show, uh, that others have championed. I, I think um, have have now made center stage. Yeah, they have, and uh, and again, uh, not only Hillary Clinton, but a lot of other folks in Democratic leadership uh, really need to find their own voice. They don't have a lot of time, but that's one of the great things about primaries. It forces people to find their own voice. Uh, and I can't help but recall the uh, primary election in 2006, Ned Lamont and Joe Lieberman. Right. What a wake-up call that was for the rest of the party that really was too, frankly, afraid. Uh, to put out a position on Iraq and to put out a way forward on Iraq because they were afraid of being called, uh, you know, chickens and, 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 and afraid of the word withdrawal when everybody in this country wanted us to get out of the country. So we're seeing the same kind of dynamic right now, except this time it's not a, you know, it may be a primary election, but this is going to stay with us for a very, very long time. And, uh, and we're going to have to keep fighting for these issues no matter what the outcome of this primary is. Senator Sanders has been very clear about that, uh, but in Senator Sanders, we have a person that's going to govern by taking his case to the people, and if that happens, uh, you are going to see a very different Congress in a hurry. Well, you know, I want to talk to you about that because uh, this, to me, goes right to the electability. We had John Nichols on the program yesterday. We we're talking about uh, that very issue of electability, and I believe that if you bring in, as they did in Iowa, uh, new voters, as Bernie did, young voters, as Bernie did. And, of course, independent voters. And, of course, he's an independent. You can call him a democratic socialist. You can call him a democrat, a progressive, whatever. But he is an independent. I think that that means so much to the Democratic Party. We saw in 2014, we've talked about this so many times, that, you know, you get people running away. Yeah. You know, um, uh, the, the father of, uh, of Mark Pryor, who was a great uh, senator for a long time, Arkansas yeah. senator, uh, was here in the studio um, and making the rounds and so forth. His son, to me, is the poster boy for what is exactly the problem with the Democratic Party today. Right. Running away from the uh, Affordable Care Act, running away from all these yep. issues, and we can't afford that any longer. No, we can't. And uh, and I think this whole business of splitting the difference doesn't work. I mean, everybody knows this. It hasn't worked for a very, very long time. Right. Uh, in fact, it's a bad game to play because you're trying to split the difference with some people who are frankly crazy. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. and also, it doesn't get anything done. Uh, right. It's not getting something done on uh, raising the you know minimum wage. It's not getting something done on improving people's standards and restoring opportunity. So uh, you need a game changer here. You need a disturber. That is Senator Bernie Sanders. Uh, and uh, and you need a sense that, uh, you know, governance isn't just about getting things done in a Republican Congress, because you can't get anything done in a Republican Congress. It's not about uh, the kind of deal-making, because that's not very effective anymore. What it is, is frankly the same kind of stuff that Reagan did, which is he took his case to the uh, uh, Congress, uh, took his case to, I'm sorry, to the people, and the people responded by telling Congress that go along with this or else. And frankly, it was the kind of stuff that I like to see, but it was the kind of governance that we have to have right now. And if Bernie is out there going for Medicare for all, if he's out there saying it's time we really did something about Wall Street, the population of this country entirely is going to respond to that, and you're going to see some Republicans voting for Wall Street reform. It's either that or else they're going to lose their office, not to mention the Democrats, of course. No doubt. Talking with Jim Dean here at Radio Row in Manchester, New Hampshire, uh, on Election Day uh, 2016, uh, Primary Day, to be specific, in uh, the great uh, Granite State. Talk to me, Jim, a little bit about uh, what you look at over the next month or so for the Sanders campaign. goes to Nevada, goes to South Carolina, then you have Super Tuesday. There are some states in the Super Tuesday column, uh, like Massachusetts, like Minnesota, like Colorado, that Obama won. Uh, uh, you know, in well, he won two of the three, not Massachusetts. Uh, are those where he's looking? I know the other states would tend to favor uh, Secretary Clinton, southern states, more conservative, but maybe there's a surprise there. Oh, sure. Uh, I spoke with uh, uh, several uh, campaign staffers in Iowa, uh, and some of them were going to be going to Oklahoma after that. Uh, they weren't just they weren't coming here to New Hampshire. They already have, of course, a great staff here, right? Because uh, they could play in Oklahoma, uh, and they could play in quite a few southern states where, of course, economic equality is inequality is at its worst. Sure, of course. So I certainly think he can do well. The one thing I want to talk about a little bit is here in New Hampshire. Uh, I, I know what polls have said in this, but playing the ex 
expectation games about margin of victory is frankly uh, in New Hampshire irrelevant. Uh, we're looking for a win tonight. Uh, we're not entirely sure how things are going to go because we never are. Why? Because it's New Hampshire, an independent electorate, an electorate that doesn't make up its minds in the primary traditionally until the very end. Uh, an electorate often changes minds on this thing. So they sure, we've had this argument with some folks um, uh, in recent days on this show and um, and from people in mainstream media that they they want to hang on to the past of you know centrist you know Republican light politics. And I think this is a loser. I, I think this is a wrong way to go. Your view? Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. This this is not the time per, to be an establishment person and not the time to think small. I mean, people want big change. And the reason that we lost in 2014, right. frankly, was because the Democratic Party brand did not stand for big, bold, inspiring you know, vision ideas, right? It was exactly. an election about nothing. We run away from issues. Yeah, ran away. And, you know, did a mother who works two or three jobs wake up on election day thinking, I need to vote today because of something impact, you know, impactful to her life? No. You know, that's why people stayed home and Republicans won. You know, the fact that we've gotten, again, big ideas, Elizabeth Warren style ideas like breaking up the big banks, jailing Wall Street bankers who broke the law, expanding Social Security and debt free college, you know, you know debated by both candidates, it, it just, it, it's, it's a harbinger of something big to come, which is massive Democratic turnout in, in November. That being said, you know, we're at a time right now where, um, we're about to go into Nevada, where there was a lot of uh, foreclosure during the, the crash. And, you know, there's this question about Hillary Clinton's Goldman Sachs speeches. And a lot of the energy is around, will she or won't she release the transcripts of those, those speeches? I think the larger and more relevant question, frankly, that voters care about is, who do politicians surround themselves with? And will the people that they appoint to key positions like Treasury Secretary, Attorney General, SEC Chair... Will they be willing to hold the big guys accountable? So I think there will be a, a growing call for both Sanders and Clinton to make more transparent the types of people they will appoint to these positions. Will it be a Joseph Stiglitz or a Paul Krugman, uh, Christina Romer, or will it be another Robert Rubin type? And, well, I, and yeah. I hope that they both enter the right, I mean, the the right way. The fact that she has not come out against Glass-Steagall to me is our, our bringing it back, I should say, yeah. is, is to me a really bad, bad uh, omen for the campaign. The fact that Paul Krugman has been more of an apologetic aspect uh, for Secretary Clinton's policies on Wall Street has also been more problematic. I just wonder how much, and you spend time in D.C. and you understand this, that what we have are a lot of Democrats that are back in the establishment, even some that have a progressive moniker next to them. And, and you know, I can see if you're not, you don't want to endorse, that's fine. But... But don't say that, you know, Secretary Clinton is as good as Senator Sanders on these economic issues when people don't trust her and don't trust her issues on this matter. I think that there is a massive difference on, on that part of it. Yeah, I think it's totally, totally fair to judge one candidate more progressive than, than the other. Right. I, th I think... You know, taking a step back, there, there are different roles for different actors. And one huge sign of success that I think we have in this election is we are redefining the scope of debate in America, right? The fact that just three years ago, we had a Democratic president putting Social Security cuts on the table, and the scope of debate was, do we do nothing or do we cut benefits? And now, as of this past Friday, when, you know, due to, you know, pressure by our groups and others, Hillary Clinton clarified that she does not support Social Security cuts, and now you know, says that she supports expansion, the scope of debate is between Bernie Sanders proposing major expansion for everybody and her proposing more limited expansion for just lower-income people. W what a sea change in, this, in the scope of debate. Now, you can look at that debate and say, oh, yeah, Bernie Sanders has the better expansion plan, which in that case I would agree with, but holy cow have we moved mountains if we've gotten Hillary Clinton to go to that position, right? The same with Wall Street. Like, the fact that we're having a debate about you know, him saying, I will break up the banks in my first 100 days, her saying, I also want to break up the banks and empower regulators to do so, but it might take longer. Holy cow, even Barack Obama wasn't talking about breaking up the big right. banks in either of his elections. So let's, let's be willing to both celebrate our progressive success in moving the scope of debate and, yes, acknowledge that in some cases, you know, one candidate clearly has a better position there's, than there's, others. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Talking to Adam Green, uh, Progressive Change Campaign Committee here on the Jeff Santos Show at Radio Row. I would say, and um, I know as somebody who's 
very close to Elizabeth Warren that uh, that you can't endorse this idea, or maybe you can. Um, and that is the idea, I think, which would be a fantastic Democratic ticket of, uh, of Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. I think together, as champions on the economic front and, and champions of, of working to help that individual you just talked about, the, the working mother, the working father, um, you know, who has kids or has uh, mortgages that have been exploded on uh, by subprime loaners and so forth. This, to me, is a perfect ticket for the perfect time. Your view? I think it's a very legitimate opinion, and uh, I don't think it's crazy to say that you know, we, we should encourage any, you know, either Clinton or Sanders to offer Elizabeth Warren the vice presidency first. She's free to turn it down. Uh, frankly, uh, I have a feeling that she would probably want more than just VP, maybe VP slash Treasury Secretary, if she was ever going to appoint something like that, uh, accept something like that. Here, here's something. Yeah. We're, we're going to talk about this. and I, I, To me, it would make no sense whatsoever, and it's my opinion, that for her to go to Secretary Clinton. First of all, two women on there, and I, I don't see how that flies uh, for a lot of men, put it that way. But, but that being said, I feel that her issues... Can, can you know are, are very much Bernie Sanders issues and vice versa. That's where it connects the dots, and I think that there is a uh, a, a very good understanding of, of that. And you know, it would to me it would be a great great way to do this. Now, some people say it's going to be too liberal, too progressive, yada yada, but that's where the energy of the party is. Yeah, no, it, I mean, it certainly is fun to think about. The